Hi, uh, welcome to the bathtub. This is Scott Bradfield, and um, we're doing another couple in a row here of, uh, of bathtub talks because I've got, got stacks of books all over the place, and I've been I, I, I like to do these when I still remember the books because I forget them like three days after I read them. And this lecture, I have I've tried to come up with the most simplistic lecture titles I can come up with, and this one is called Kerouac No, Brodigan Yes. So the title is. Kerouac, no. Brodigan, yes. Uh, most of you know who Jack Kerouac is. I've never been able to read Jack Kerouac. And I think this book particularly, On the Road, bores the crap out of me every time I read it. Again, it's everyone's bathtub is their own bathtub. And if you enjoy it, God bless you and have a great God, Heaven bless you or, or uh, good luck bless you and enjoy him. I can never read him. I find him boring. Um, the stories go nowhere. And it's just like these little riffs at Endless. Brodigan is a writer, like probably many of you who know him, who many of us read when we're teenagers or, or young young people, um, particularly in my generation. And sort of, I guess he was sort of almost viewed as a guilty pleasure. I, I, I stopped reading him decades ago. I read him a lot when I was 18, 19, 20 years old and enjoyed him. And then kind of lost track of him and always felt like, well, he's a little silly. Maybe I shouldn't really take him seriously. And... Have always wanted to go back and and I have read I've read him since then a couple of times. Um, actually, I, what got me back into Braddon was several years ago. Uh, um, I reviewed his unpublished novel. Well, this is 10, 20 years ago now, called An Unfortunate Woman, which struck me because it was one of the few unpublished novels. You know, they always bring these books out after people die. That usually they're awful. It was actually a really good unpublished novel. It was as good as anything as I'd ever read of Brownigan's. So I've always had him in the back of my mind to go back and read again. And recently, for various reasons, I went back to read his first novel, A Confederate General from Big Sur, and it was just delightful. It was funny. It was just fresh. It was, you know, there, there's certain dated qualities to Brownigan and certain aspects of his personality that are a little difficult to take. But um, I really enjoyed the book. And I enjoy the way he writes. He writes really sharp, funny scenes. They're slightly surreal, but not so surreal that they just go off the map, like sometimes like Brown, like Barthelme does. And the the central protagonists of his characters are these kind of gentle, woolly, lost people, much probably like Brownigan presents himself to be. And they're very uh, kind of romantically affectionate towards usually some woman who comes along. And he, he writes about real losers and outcasts. And the Confederate general in this is a man named Lee Mellon, who's based on uh, a real character who lived in uh, Big Sur for decades and actually just died recently in uh, Monterey. And it's basically going to live in Big Sur with this completely wild, drunken, crazy man who's, um, who's also very funny. And the way he's presented is funny. And the way these guys live in this crummy old house and the rude characters they meet is 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 hilarious. Um, and it holds up. And it's a kind of a gentle book. And it's an affectionate book. And it's an emotional book. And I, I really recommend Brodigan. I think he really holds up. I think he's been kind of, he's kind of unfairly disparaged. And he was also, a, as I understand, a really difficult man. Um, one of the things I've noticed over the years is that uh, Brodigan was... I would often go to cities or towns at various times in my life to give a reading, say, and I remember often asking the people, because I was always interested, who were the difficult writers who came to visit? And almost every one of them said Brodigan. I guess he had real drinking problems. He had real, real emotional issues. Uh, he'd been an institutionalized at one time, and he clearly had come from a really difficult background, and I guess he was a difficult man to be around. So for various reasons, he's he's maybe not take, taken seriously as a cultish following, but he's a really smart, sharp writer. And he takes a lot of time with his sentences and his paragraphs, and he doesn't treat himself like a kind of, you know, icon of truth, which is always a warning sign for me. I'll read just a short passage. I'll try not to do too long a passage. It's, it's just another, it's, a, it's being in a bar. At one point, his buddy Lee Mellon, they're living out in Big Sur, he says, uh, his buddy Led says, let's hitchhike to Monterey and get drunk. And the narrator says, only if I can fill my pockets with rice when we get there and put a pound of hamburger in my wallet, 
before we start drinking, I said. I used the word wallet like one uses the word mausoleum. Okay, he said. Every sentence makes sense if you look at it. Eight, years, eight hours later, I was sitting in a small bar in Monterey with a young girl. She had a glass of red wine in front of her, and I had a martini in front of me. Sometimes it just happens that way. There's no telling the future and little understanding of what's gone on before. Lee Mellon was passed out underneath the saloon. I had hosed the vomit off him and covered him with a large piece of cardboard so the police wouldn't find him. <laughs> there were a lot of other people in the bar. At first, I could barely contain my amusement at human and public surroundings. I was pretending very hard that I was a human being, and by doing so, I allowed myself to come on with the girl. I had met her about an hour earlier when Lee Mellon had passed out on top of her. In subtracting him from her, a thing not taught in grade school arithmetic, we had struck up a casual conversation and had flowered into us sitting opposite each other and having a drink together. Anyway, I don't want to read too much. I think it, I, I really recommend uh, any of his books, but I would certainly go back to read this first book. When it came out in the mid-60s, I guess, it was totally disappeared. No one heard of it. And the book that made his reputation was the second novel, Trout Fishing in America, which I want to reread. We can, we can talk about it. I, I want to just talk briefly about him today. Because while I was reading this, I found out about a book. I don't normally recommend biographies in the bathtub. And this is a very hard book to carry into the bathtub. This is the paperback of a huge biography of Fradigan by um, William Hjortsberg. And Hjortsberg is a writer who's worth taking into the bathtub. He wrote a lot of strange books. He's most famous for Fallen Angel, which was turned into a Mickey Rourke movie where he's, you know, he's a detective dealing with the devil and all this stuff. This is a this is a wonderful biography. I'm only about a two, it's, uh, I'm about a quarter of the way into this massive book, and Hjortsberg was a friend of Bradigan's, and this is one of the most detailed and objective and affectionate biographies I've ever read. So he knew Bradigan pretty well, and he goes out and gets huge amounts of data from lots of people who met Bradigan. He didn't really stay in contact with a lot of his old friends. And Hjortsberg goes back and sees people who Bradigan stayed with, you know, for two weeks back, you know, in, in the in the late 50s. And he gets this really great material of, of Bradigan's life. And he came from a really difficult home, really a difficult mother. He kind of walked away from his family and was walking away from people pretty much his whole life. The, the book does a wonderful job of, of just kind of dealing with him and the hard work he put into writing what seems like flip prose, but he's not. He's a very, very careful writer. And the dedication he put into his writing, and then just the life and the world around him. So, for example, there's a long passage about, you know, when Kerouac and all the, the big shot beats came and acted so, you know, pretentious in, in San Francisco. You know, they all treated Bradley kind of like a loser fool. And... Uh, um, it, it does a nice picture of his his place in that that uh, scene that was happening in the in the in the fifties. I, I love this book, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm reading it slowly. It's a wonderful a wonderful biography to kind of to connect yourself with uh, that period of writing. If you're interested in the beats, then you should be interested in this as well. I'm not interested in the beats, but I am interested in Brodigan and Hjortsberg right, does a wonderful job of bringing the flesh and the bones of this guy to life. So really check this out. And I'm going to kind of read along with this book as I read through Bradigan in the next few uh, you know, decades, possibly, in the bathtub. Okay, so I think that's all I had to say. Um, somebody asked for more, for more uh, one of my, one of my uh, uh, better viewers wanted more martinis in the bathtub, so there's, there's our martini this week. And I'm going to do another one shortly. But uh, check out uh, Confederate General for Big Sur and um, and if you really get interested in the guy, William Hjortsberg's lovely, massive, always absorbing. You can't. You start reading it, you can't really put it down. Lovely biography of the guy and the times he lived in. All right. See you next week in the bathtub. Bye.